Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Here a quick guide for the Wraith Lord Necromancer in Last Epoch. The build is built around the new unique Wraith Lord Harbor, which will summon a Wraith Lord for us when using the skill Summon Wraith. And you can only have one of these lords up and it will summon other wraiths for us until we hit the max limit of our wraiths. After that it will shoot out necrotic beams dealing damage to three enemies at a time and it will also consume any non wraith minion to empower itself with some extra health and spell damage for 10 seconds. And uh, this buff is uh, something that we don't really care about in this setup. So everything is built around the Wraith Lord and buffing it as much as we can. And as you can see it do hit really hard. And as long as you are on the run we can have it up for a really long time. So let's go over quickly how the build works out. First for the Wraith we want to go and grab basically every flat damage and multiplier that we can. And uh, the Wraith passive tree have tons of it. And here we also want to grab the Twin Spirit which makes it so we can have up to 2 Wraith at most so we reach the max limit faster. Also the next node sequel of Everest for a 180% damage multiplier to the Wraith Lord as well. For the next skill we want to use is Dread Shade and this is to boost the damage even further. We have Grim Fate here for a 60% damage multiplier. We got some flat necrotic damage here from Lingering Doom. All for one for additional 40% damage multiplier. And also Doomed Wraith for additional 45% damage multiplier. And uh, here we also have Egoism which makes it so our Wraith Lord now also will always crit. But wait, there is more. We're also using Infernal Shades. And from Manic Pyre our Wraith Lord will get 12% cost speed per second that the shade has been up on him up to a maximum of 72%. And this will make the Wraith Lord quite fast. The Inferno Shade will make it so the Wraith Lord take damage from it but as I mentioned earlier as long as we are active uh, the Wraith Lord will have no problem to sustain itself uh, from Life Lich. And if you would die, just uh, summon him and buff him up again and you are ready to go. Another skill that we are going to be using is going to be Bone Curse. And uh, this is mainly for Sigil of Mortality, which makes it so Bone Curse now applies Mark for Death. And Mark of Death is a curse that will lower all resistance on the target by 25%. We're also getting some extra armor shred chance here from the bone curse as well. And lastly we are using transplant as our mobility skill and from this we are getting bone armor and here we get some flat armor and also make so we take less damage taken uh, for a couple of seconds here. And we're also getting haste here from acolytes uh, fervor and as a quality of life from doombringer when we cast transplant we will now also cause a bone curse where we are arriving with the transplant. And we're also combining this with the minion teleport experimental mod on boots which is exactly what I just mentioned. It uh, will teleport minions around us after we use a travel skill. And the reason we want to have this is for the locus of death uh, passive in the summon wraith passive tree which makes it so our wraith are unable to move. And if you don't have the boot, you can also use the summon skeleton mages. And here we have a node called Grave Passage, which makes the skill a teleport and will now count as a travel skill. And combining this with the next one here, Death Cavalry, will give you the same effect as the boots have. Or you can just remove the locus of death and make the Wraith Lord go freely. So that's basically how the build works out. Let's go and see what items we are using here. And I just imported everything here from my online character. So there are still some room for a lot of improvements here. Uh, let's start with the Wraith Lord's Harbor here. So we get some colon recovery here. Same for minions from the base. And we get plus one to summon Wraith. Increase minion movement speed. 
and we also get some flat damage here for melee and spell for minions. And this helm is also the thing making us uh, able to use the Wraith Lords. The Wraith Lords skates with your summon Wraith Tree and uh, summon other Wraith for you while in combat. And also while at max Wraith, the Wraith will cause occurring beams, regularly dealing damage, consuming your non-Wraith minions to empower itself, gaining temporary maximum health equal to 10% of their maximum health and plus 10 spell damage for 10 seconds. Next we're using Death Rattle, and this is probably the number one amulet for any minion builds. Uh, we get minion damage and critical strike chance here from the base, but also the big note here, the minion critical strike multiplier. And now it's up to 65%. We're also getting some intelligence here as well. Our minions will take some increased damage here, this is nothing to worry really about. It's uh, nothing that our Wraith Lord can't handle. And we're also using Euler's Obsession here, and this makes it so the stats on this item also applies to your minion. And as the Wraith Lord is causing a spell, we want as much cost speed as we can. And uh, here I just get a normal T5, you can get uh, up to 30% with a T7 modifier. Also the spell damage there helps a bit as well, and uh, the resist health for our character. And for the weapon we're using a Bone Scythe. This is for the minion necrotic penetration from the base. Really huge damage multiplier for our Wraith Lord. And also we managed to get a T7 with the minion spell damage. Huge boost for our base damage for the Wraith Lord. And yes, you can have double of these, so do keep that in mind. You can have one with minion melee and spell damage. And the one that we just had is minion spell and also bow damage. For the body, the main thing you want to go for here is a plus level of summon wraiths. For rings, a turquoise ring for the base is the primary thing to look for here, as we get minion damage and also minion critical strike multiplier. Nothing crazy with the belt, get some minion damage and health. For the boost, as we mentioned earlier, it's for the experimental mod there, for the minion teleport around us. Also increased movement speed and health helps as well. And for the relic, nothing crazy here either, just more minion damage and health basically. The next thing I'm going to aim for for this character is going to try and uh, get more intelligence here. Uh, not only is this going to boost the damage and health of the minion, but uh, we can now also start to scale a ward, as we get ward retention from intelligence as well. I just think it's uh, more viable to use ward as an endgame option for this build to really shine. For the idols, I basically just went with uh, health idols, health percent for each one here and uh, resist basically. If you can manage to get a double health like these, that's really helpful. And here have a quick uh, look on the passive skill tree, but for more information I do recommend to go and check out Lost Epoch Tools, where you can find this build planner. And to the top of the build planner you can also go to loot filters, where you can find my ultimate loot filter with a lot of options depending on how strict you want it to be. Link for this will be in the description. So what do you think about the Wraith Lord the Necromancer? Have you had the time to try it out yet or try another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And if you got any other questions feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!